sales process. You have become yes. a student of this. You have you've dug into this and, and training and learning and different things. In that whole, whole educational process you have gone through, Mm-hmm. You've been able to kind of figure, kind of, kind of put things into a, a multi, a facet of what the sales process is. Walk me through what the, are those different facets of the process. Okay, so we have a, a specific definitive process that I developed for uh, our company, Tailored Weddings, and through my trainings with Jeffrey Gittimer and many others too. And a lot of what I find DJs and wedding pros, for that matter, have learned about the sales process especially the first what step or two is a little bit backwards. Uh, the steps, you want me to list out the steps? I mean, yeah, just kind of give, it, give, us the, give us the different steps in there and not, and not much, maybe a, a step in about a sentence and then we'll dig into each part a little bit. And- okay, so the steps for me that we teach in the Sales of Solutions workshop is number one, first is research your client. Number two is a welcome, filling in the blanks, what's your and their story. And then we get into their experience, their expectations, their goals. And then how do they plan to get to their goal? That's step four. And then after that, we have, we're have we painting the picture of their outcome with yourself at the helm of the, of the party, of course, or at the event. Um, and then we're presenting solutions, how to close after that. And then finally, you're overcoming objections, right? We all know that's a tough thing. Uh, how do you handle that? And then finally, we're setting expectations. What are those next steps that you have to take? So that to me is this is a sales process that we work through with every single client uh, that comes to us at Tailored Weddings. So you've got it really laid out into a, a nice flow chart. And, and, I, and I think when, when in, let's, let's look at uh, this time of the year, we were doing bridal shows. Yeah. When does that sales process kind of kick in? If you were to put it, you know, the of of the time from the moment the bride hits your booth, when when and how do those pieces come together? I think it starts even before the bride hits the booth. I think it starts in regards to figuring out the bridal shows themselves. In fact, I dropped a bridal show this year due to the fact that the past one or two times we've done the show, we haven't gotten the response we've wanted out of it. So I think. Just like we talk about in research your client um, for the first step of the sales cycle, it's the same thing in researching other wedding pros, other events you want to be affiliated with, a part of, to know, is this the right fit for us as a marketing vehicle, as a sales vehicle, or not? So I think it starts even before the bridal show. But then, of course, once we get to the bridal show, let's <laughs> let's go there. Uh, once we get to the bridal show, then it's a case of having that game plan already prepared uh, before you get to the show. In other words, what are you going to use for marketing? What are you going to use for an approach? How are you going to set up your booth? What are you going to use any gear or not? Uh, what are you going to showcase? How are you going to get their attention? How are you going to be remembered? So those are just, I don't know, seven, six, seven questions I just rattled off right, right there. Yeah. Uh, all different things that you need to be focusing on before you get to the show. Okay, so now we, we've we've thought we kind of worked our way through. We found a show that we liked that fits our demographic for the, yep. the type of bride we want. We've we've gone and we've answered these questions, and we've we figure our game plan of how we're going to use that information that we could eventually get from the show. Now, how does a person prepare? I think is the best way to to engage the bride at this show. What what kind of things would help someone prepare for that? So preparing to engage a bride at the show, you first need to put yourself in her shoes. You first need to understand what she's going through. And the reality is at a bridal show, she is so overwhelmed with everything going on. And you don't want to be one of the typical wedding pros that are there just jumping out right away and saying, what's your date? You know, uh, you want to have something to engage them. And It could be many different things. It could be the weather that day. It could be uh, the reality of, you know, how overwhelmed they are, stressed they are. Uh, I often joke with uh, a bride and groom when they come up to my booth. I remember doing the Palace of Auburn Hills bridal show in Metro Detroit where there's literally over a thousand brides coming through uh, the palace where the Pistons play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're stuffing bags up these shows just with your marketing literature and you're you know, investing a ton of money into a marketing piece 
to try to set yourself apart because that's how they will sort through you later is the marketing pieces that you have. And just to try to break the ice with them, you need to have something to do that. So back then for me, because of the cattle call that it was for brides, it was, you know, uh, did you get some good kindling for your fireplace? Uh, <laughs> and plug their bag. It, it, it have a, because that's the reality of it, right? Half of this stuff was going to end up just in the garbage or yeah. starting a fire with. Uh, so you need to have something to be able to break that ice. Uh, humor, as, as Ron noted earlier in our, in our segment here tonight, it, it can be a powerful, powerful connector. And it, something where you can, you know, know comedy and, and if you study any comedy training, that can definitely help you as well. Um, the other biggest thing I think from that standpoint in regards to engagement and connecting a, a bride right away is you need to make them think and ask a question that will make them think. <clears throat> We're big proponents um, here at Sales of Solutions for Jeffrey Gittimer's trainings and things like that. And uh, I've had the pleasure of being a Gittimer certified advisor now for about a year. And I've conducted a few of the Black Book of Little Black Book of Connections workshops. And one of our uh, workshop items in that particular workshop uh, that we've adapted for Sales of Solutions as well uh, is a 30 second commercial. And your 30 second commercial is how you engage a prospect that you've never met before uh, to want to know more about you. And that's about your time frame at a bridal show, right? Mm -hmm. Is the same thing. So we go through a four step process uh, in regards to your 30 second commercial and how to properly, you know, um, get someone to ask you a question because if you can get someone to ask you a question, you win. Right. You win them. Okay. So, so the, the, let's do a, 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 a kind of a hypothetical here. You're, sure. you're at the bridal show. Um, bride, bride Susie comes up and says, uh, you know, says, hi, Mitch, uh, uh we're looking for a DJ. Um, we're wondering if you would be open for our day. That's that's what she's going to lead with. She didn't lead with the how much do you charge. Now, okay. I want to how how you would take her from there to you mentioned you want her to the you want to get her to the point where she's think where she's she's thinking. You you said that. Yep, absolutely. How do we do that? So, what, what what give me an example of of a way that that could happen? So, again, depending on how they've asked me, how they've approached it, will be how I approach them. Uh, there are actually four types of, of commercials you can use. Um, there's a deficit commercial. There's a give first commercial. It's what do you do? And then an unfair advantage. But in this case, I would probably go with, if she says, hi, Mitch, we're looking to possibly hire you as a DJ. You know, are you available for our date? That would probably be to me a give first approach, uh, which that to me then would be a case of, you know, I meet a lot of brides and one of the best ways that I can help them is to ask, you know, what else do you need for your wedding day? And then once I have those answers, I'll search my mental database of people that I know and see who I know that will fit what you're looking for. And then let's share that together. Let's sit down and talk over coffee and see if I can help you. And then we'll talk more about your wedding too. And I'm going to help you with other things besides just the DJ portion. Okay. So giving first, I, I think is a huge help there. And of course, it's going to you know, ingratiate you to her as well. And that will in turn make her want to chat with you more because you're giving first of something that she may need. Okay. You said there were more than one though. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah just give, give me just a, just give me the, okay. give me the, ti the titles of, or, or, or All right. a so little, little quick snip, snippet of each one. A, a deficit commercial is where you show your prospective client that they have a problem something that you might be able to help with something that they didn't even know they had a problem that existed before, you know, they walked in and met you essentially at that moment, probably my favorite, uh, 30 second commercial. And please, I want to, I want to caveat this for a second, John, if I yeah. can, um, I'm not, I'm not telling you, I don't, I would not suggest for you to take what I'm saying here today and write it down verbatim and then, you know, practice it and use yeah. it. Because it, you need to find what works for you. There's a certain formula that we use to help you create your own 30-second personal commercial. Uh, and I can walk through that, too, if you wish. Um, so my deficit commercial is essentially who is guaranteeing your guests will leave your reception saying, wow, that was so much fun. It was so Jennifer and Corey. Interesting, because when you mentioned deficit 
and I was envisioning my head to a point of almost selling against the fear. No. And and that's not the right the direction you went to. That, that's no. interesting. I, that was, I, and I was I was just that immediately. That's what you know. De- deficit. Oh, what are you missing? Oh my gosh, you should you could have had so much more. You know, somehow incorporating that. But that's interesting how you take it the, a different direction. So I, for I'm, me, I'm not unexpected. the biggest. I'm not the biggest fan of fear based selling. I mean. There's a space for it, I think, as long as it's true. A fear-based selling that I would use is, a, is not a case of anything deceitful. It's a case of, hey, we only have one availability left for your day. You know, if you'd like, you can you know, have the contract be pending. I can pencil you in for seven days. You can leave with a contract. doesn't obligate you, but yet you're one step closer if you decide to go with us. And, you know, and if someone else calls, I'll give you a first right of refusal. Um, that's what we do. Again, you do what you want to do. Um, that would be an item of quote unquote fear-based selling, Mm -hmm. but it's true at that point. We we would only have one availability left if I told somebody that it's not a case of leading them on. Um, so once you get them to think about that question, who is guaranteeing your guests will leave your reception saying, wow, that was so much fun. It was so Jennifer and Corey pause, let them think about that. Yeah. And then, and then I will uh, would normally say, what if I could guarantee that's exactly what your guests will say about yours? And then nice. they're intrigued. They want mm-hmm. to hear more. So yeah. then you go into, you know, your pitch, if you will. Uh, my name is Mitch Taylor of Tailored Weddings. My mission is to have your guests saying that exact phrase, you know, wow, that was so much fun. It was so Jennifer and Corey. I want them to say that exact phrase at the end of, the, end of your night, you know. I don't know if I can deliver that for you or not, but I'd like love, love to chat with you over a cup of coffee and see how I can help. When's good for us to get together? And that's it. Um, but this helps to intrigue them. There are other things we use at a bridal show as well to, to draw a meeting, uh, which we can talk about too if you want. But, um, but yeah, that's a few, few examples of a personal commercial. Okay. There's a couple. You've given us a couple here, but we've got some questions, Mitch, and I don't want to. Sure. I, I, I don't want to wait late, but we uh, we we have a couple that I want to do hit here. Um, sure. Uh, somebody had asked about contests, um, about contests at a bridal show booth. Is that something that um, was this be something that if you had to put this into your plan early, that it would be? Yes. Okay. Kind of go through then. Give them give them a a, a sixty second how they would implement a plan using a contest so implement a plan using a contest we've done a few different contests over the years some have been successful some have flopped just point blank i did a uh, diamond giveaway that completely flopped i would have thought that it would have worked out well uh didn't work out well um so we had a diamond code and we had a letter we sent out with the code on it and if their code matched the one posted they had to call into our office to see if it matched the code this is back before, you know, we had websites that could match all this stuff up. And yeah. <laughs> um, so that was one we ran that did, ended up not going so well. Right now, we currently use scratch-off cards, and those work exceptionally well for us. And a bride comes into the booth. We do the 30-second personal commercial, if you will. Uh, one of our brides just has a chat with her. And then from there, uh, we find out where they're at in the process. Are you looking to, you know, to have a sit down and build meet with anyone at this point? Where are you guys at in your process? Are you just early on? Are you looking for a DJ right now? That kind of thing. And then um, if they're ready to meet with someone, we say, Hey, if you'd like to schedule a meeting with us, uh, we'll write your name on one of these scratch off cards. When you come in, you can win up to 20% off your wedding entertainment package with us. Um, and then, or a few other offers that we have on there, and then we'll scratch it off together at the meeting and see if you win. Sure. Uh, and so scratch off cards have worked pretty well. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, a comment here from Chris, um, being from a small area, I wanted to adventure to the bigger city bridal shows. I know we do a great, we do great work, but fear, uh, fear that, uh, fear about if they can compete, any advice okay. over overcoming the fear <laughs> of being able to compete? Uh, yes. Oh boy. Chris, we, we're going to address this coming up at mobile beat. Uh, Las Vegas 20 when my seminar called, uh, called Roar uh, right before Red Foo there on Tuesday. And Roar is an acronym for Risk, Opportunity, Action, and Reward. And I would argue that you need to overcome that risk, that fear, uh, that risk you have of, well, should I not do that or not? Um, 
you know what, man, just do your, do, you know, do your investigating in regards to the show, decide if it's, you know, what you want, if it's going to deliver number of brides you want, right. Are they advertising it? Well, uh, the reason I abandoned a show because they didn't drive the number of brides we wanted to get out of that yeah. uh, time frame. Um, but I would definitely look at how many other DJs are there. Um, you know, what are you going to be able to compete on? What's your niche? What's your hook? And then work on it, practice it, and absolutely sign up. Take that advantage. Uh, take that leap. I've tried to jump into Green Bay Bridal Show Market before. Uh, frankly, it ended up not panning out for us very well. It's an area that's saturated with um, lower-priced alternatives, if you will. And for the drive time, it didn't really work out for what yeah. I wanted. But um, it ain't going to hurt to take that risk. I would encourage you to explore and, and take that risk if you can. Good stuff. Good stuff. Our next uh, next question. The answer to Cindy's question is yes. Yeah, I think Cindy. I think we might have covered that in the um, in the the um, the scratch offs. Scratch offs. Scratch offs. Um, we, let me let me let me clarify that, John, real quick though. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify Cindy's question, I think it is: Do you offer incentives or discount special at the show? No, I don't want to book a bride at the show. I want to be able to book meetings at the bridal show. And to me, there's a big difference. There are a lot of companies that will want to book right at the show. I want to book them right at the show. I'm still a big believer in Michael Port, uh, red velvet rope policy, and know the clients that you're working for and know if they're a right fit for you or not. And I also, um, believe it or not, I, I have fired a client once because in the end, we just weren't a good fit. Yeah, uh, and I didn't want to put my in, my team member, my employee, in that situation either. And so uh, I wouldn't recommend just booking willy nilly at a show without ever getting a chance to actually sit down and chat and find out really if they're a good fit for you and if you're a good fit for them. I think you're you're not setting them up for success if you do a booking at the show just willy nilly, just based upon uh, they want to book right then and give you money. But yeah. That's my philosophy. It's not everyone's philosophy. Yeah, exactly. I think I think that's very common with a lot of people. But as you say, it's not everyone. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to, I want to revisit um, Chris Chris's Chris's question about the fear of of competing. Uh, there's one little aspect of it that really I think helped me personally. And then Mitch, we'll get back to you, back back to the sure. stuff. Sure. Um, when I started to go to national DJ conventions and starting to meet people like yourself, Mitch, and the Bill Herman and different people, and starting to to kind of network and learn and improve my show and and getting a better feel for what everyone else is out there doing at a higher level, it really kind of helps to boost your confidence to know that, hey, you know what? I, I'm learning from these people and I'm 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 getting better and I'm improving. And if I'm if I'm able to improve to a level where I can be in the same, you know, room or stratosphere with some of the, the national talent. Talent, that's a confidence builder for me that I know now that I could I can travel pretty much anywhere and I'm going to be above average easily if not one of the top people in any market and that came because of going to conventions and networking and learning from other people and asking questions and at times sharing videos of my performance with others and such yeah I think that's just a, a critical part of of really breaking down that fear barrier well, and for me, yes, that, and also a little bit of the reverse of that, actually, too, because when I, uh, this all goes back to Mark Farrell's Disc Jockey America for me, and getting involved in the national scene and the, and the Northern Disc Jockey Conference, the very first conference I, I attended after I got Tailored Entertainment off the ground, uh, now Tailored Weddings, but, um, you know, I got to meet Bill Herman, and I got to meet, you know, Mark and, and, you know, many other people that I looked up to, Randy Bartlett and, and still do to this day for that matter, and realize that, wow, I'm, I need to really step up my game here. So I threw myself into training and I, I've taken, I don't know, eight Marbecca workshops and, you know, Toastmasters and, you know, uh, comedy workshops at Kyle Cease and Louis Anderson and many other things. And I find that that helps sharpen my saw and the reason why I still am a huge proponent of training is because, frankly, I don't think I'm that good, number one. And number two, I don't want some young buck to come up and take my spot. And if I stop, it's, it's going to happen. For sure. So. Definitely, definitely. Um, 
Geez, we're going to keep going with some questions here. Sure. Uh, Naveen was uh, sharing sharing that uh, they you know six to eight companies in a, in a their bridal show that he does. A lot of people there. Um, and in the ask question of how do you feel about live mixing in the booth to demonstrate demonstrate your skills? And I've got a, I've got a thought on this one, but I'm going to let you you start it out with that. I have some thoughts on that too. Um, a few different things. Number one, if that is part of your USP. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was going to go. <laughs> For those who aren't familiar with USP, please define that. Unique selling position. Thank you. And uh, if that's part of your USP, I don't necessarily have that big of a problem with it. I would probably encourage you, though, to rent a separate room um, somehow, because otherwise you may upset the other vendors that are in your area, the other wedding pros that are in your area at the bridal show, because we all know DJs, I'm sorry, but we're, that music's going to get progressively louder as the, as the mix goes on. I, I know I'm guilty of it when I'm mixing. It's like, oh, eh, eh. <laughs> just, the volume just keeps increasing every yep. <laughs> as you go. Uh, so I would, you know, caveat that a little bit. Um, if it's part of your USP, I, I would argue that there are probably few DJs, and I haven't seen everyone, obviously, but there are a few DJs where I would say that that is part of their USB. I would think so. Uh, the Jason Janis of the world, uh, uh, the Matt Radicellis of the world, uh, who's going to be presenting on Monday at Mobile Beat as well. Uh, man, I'm so looking forward to Matt's presentation. Uh, and I've seen it before. <laughs> but um, if, you know, if that's part of your unique skill set, then I think it's okay. But with a caveat of be sure you're getting permission from the show owner, watch for not upsetting other wedding pros, that kind of thing. And Max just made a good uh, mention in here, and, and you, Max, you're going to see this in 30 seconds. It, Max mentioned, um, you know, the speakers, my speakers are bigger. There are some people who are going to have that as their, their USP of gear, that they can bring the yes. biggest, largest, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, nope. don't, don't get us wrong. It's just that nothing wrong with that. There's, there's, we each have our different sal selling points, and I think that's that's a really, you know, as as I've talked to Naveen, for a lot of you who don't aren't familiar with him, first off, you should get to know him. He's a very, a very, very diverse background in his entertainment yes. compared to a lot of a lot of the rest of us, and he does some really cool things and is a wealth of uh, information and knowledge, and his so USP is going to be much different than yes. what mine is. So. It's it's just a, a different uh, a different look in things. What was the comment? Most DJs don't like each other. What was that about? I I, th I think buttery. I, I think that's that's an accurate statement. You really think about it, Mitch. Uh, we go back fifteen to twenty years ago, and it might have been, but really early on, DJs didn't yeah. like each other. You know, we would be like, oh my god, here's my here's my. These are my my. Th this is mine. No, you can't learn. From, you can't watch yeah. me. Go, you can't. And I think that's what Buttery's really is that maybe there's that exists out there, with with some uh, some people in some markets. But it, I don't think it's as prevalent as it once was. Before we started going to conventions and before we started, you know, having these sessions and such. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was. You know, well, I'm not going to talk to you. You're not going. You no. My weddings. Oh yeah, I, I do a couple of weddings and. That's it. Now, you know, we'd never talk about it and say, hey, you know, how do you, you know, talk to that bride when she comes up to your bridal show booth? We'd have never had that conversation. It would have been, yeah, right. you'll learn it yourself. <laughs> right. And, and I don't know. I, I'm not a, I'm a fan of giving back. I'm a fan of doing what I can to help anyone succeed. Um, there are a lot of different um, ways to do that. And that's offline, online, you know, workshop format whatever. There's a lot of ways, this live chat right here. I mean, yeah. a lot of ways to do that. And Naveen's mentioned, he mentioned earlier, a, there was somebody at a bridal show booth had one of those little robots. And I'm, sh I'm guessing the robot was probably the screen and it moved around. Uh, Modern Family had an episode where they had the robots on, but it was something that a person in a remote location could control and do their things. Cool idea, but I look at something like that. Yes, people were taking pictures with it and they were, oh, it's, so, it's, an, it's an attention grabber. But yeah. There's the uh, having the attention, getting the attention, and actually making the eventual sale. Just because they have a robot means nothing about their DJ ability, their ability to work with the crowd, uh, to create a magic moment, as Ron was talking about, or a memorable moment. Yeah. It, it's a USP, I suppose. It can be a USP, but in the end, is the robot going to be at your reception? And then is it going to take attention away from really where it, it should be? Um, 
I don't know. Yeah, and it would be interesting to see, to know, and I'm sure you'll never get a straight answer from the the, the crew that uh, rented it because it had it seemed like a great idea at the time, but yeah, it's it's one of those things that so, yeah, we were we were doing a bridal a bridal show and um, and they were giving the DJ company was giving out uh, giving out a piece of cake and and it was something I don't remember it cut like cupcakes or something to that effect and it was okay. you know, a sweets for the sweetest day of your life you know and and they were giving it out and a cupcake wrapper had the names on there and boy you know from a distance it's like oh my god that's a great idea because your name's on every cupcake well what do people do with cupcakes. Exactly. Like what, five, do five five seconds. Seconds. what do they do with the, the, the wrapper? <laughs> it was. I mean, on paper, it's like, oh my gosh, everyone's gonna see our name. Yeah, for six seconds. It's a bad idea. <laughs> my opinion. Yeah, exactly. But don't get me wrong. I love cupcakes. And somebody, I love somebody cupcakes. somewhere thought that was a great idea and enough to do it. But oh, okay, Mitch, we got We got to get back into it. Uh, well, yeah. Let's let's talk. Let's talk a little bit now. So. So we we're having the conversation with the bride. You mentioned, of course, getting them thinking, getting them asking questions. Now, yes. in your flow, what kind of questions do you want them to be asking you beyond price and beyond availability? We need to go to questions that are, are secondary and, and, and tertiary levels. What kind of questions are you trying to work them towards? I just want to find out, you know, more about them, you know, what do they want out of their event? What do they want their guests to say? One of, the, one of my favorite questions to ask in a sales appointment is, if you could be a fly on the wall or in the car as your guests are driving home from your reception, what do you want them to say? And then, because that's their outcome. Yep. That's what they want it to be. And then find out, okay, now that's what you want to happen. Now let's work it backwards. How do we get to that? And then they, they, you know, do the deer in headlights look, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, in most cases. So, and that's where you position yourself as the expert in the process. Um, so to me, the kinds of questions I want them to ask, I guess, is what makes you different? That's one question. Right. Um, you know, what do you do at events? And then, I'll walk them through a scenario. I'll walk them through, you know, just to introduce a cake, what we work through just to introduce a cake. And have you thought about how each moment is going to happen? Have you thought about the flow of your event? Those are those different questions that we ask and just get a conversation going. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't necessarily need to, them to ask me specific questions, more so I want to create a, a deep, strong connection with them and find that, that hot button, if you will, uh, what that trigger point is, what they want more than anything else, and then see how we can deliver that. That hot button thing, though, can be just, uh, it, it's, it's not like there's a one. There's just so many variables with that. Correct. There, there can be more than one hot button. Yeah, it could be more than one hot button, but I mean, the hot button's going to be so different from person to person. I mean, yes. I've, had, I've had examples where there's been, you know, a, 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 a the hot thing that the bride wanted was she wanted her, her dress to glisten like a, a disco ball in the middle of the dance floor. I've had some where they wanted to have that moment with mom because, you know, she was a single mom raising me. You know, there's just so many. How do you how do you try to find those? I mean, is it possible to find those within that on well, that bridal show floor? Is this something that you just can't do there, and you have to get to the meeting? Here's another one that I the bridal show floor is tough uh, because you you have a finite period of time typically, uh, unless you have multiple multiple people staffing a booth. And depending, of course, how big your show is and everything else, mm -hmm. we often do shows there. There's you know fifty to one hundred fifty brides. That's our normal bridal show size, if you will, up here. Uh, I'm sure elsewhere there could be, you know, 5,000 brides in attendance at a show over a weekend or whatever the case may be. Uh, I prefer to do a smaller show to have a greater chance of making a connection versus doing the stuffing of the bags. But another, another question I'll often ask is, and this is even in the, in the sales appointment, is are you going to have a father, daughter, or mother, son dance? Mm -hmm. And then how do you want that moment to be? And I'll ask him that question. Right. And then I'll say, okay, so what have you seen at other weddings you've been a part of? 
how has that moment been, pre been presented? And most time they can't really give me an, anything stronger than, well, someone just announced it. And I said, well, is that what you want for yours? And then from there, um, you know, we talk about the fact that, okay, I personally, I think that moment deserves much more than just, it's time for the father daughter dance. Yep. I, I mean, really? You're, you're compressing 20 plus years of life now into four minutes. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? But that's the reality of what you are trying to do in that moment. And so we chat a little bit about, you know, that and how we can create a unique moment for that. And, and then we, we chat about, you know, details of if you can create two, three, four unique moments throughout the night, um, and that will then create some spontaneity in the event, and thereby guests will stay longer. And that's something I got from, I don't want to, you know, name drop as much as Ron did, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't think you could. We don't have enough time left. <laughs> oh, but I believe in giving credit where credit is due. And I'm pretty sure that was originally, for me anyway, my original source of that was, uh, was Bill Herman and the entertainment experience. Mm -hmm. And, it, but it absolutely is a part of the sales conversation. It absolutely is because you're selling yourself and how you can impact their day, not just how you impact their day. That's just pain in the picture but painting the picture of their outcome with you at the helm of the event, the memories they're going to get, the difference in the smile of everyone's watching us, or maybe they're not, they're looking at their phones. If the DJ just says, it was time for the father daughter dance. Or if you really create a moment and draw people in, I got a phone call from a guest at my wedding on January 2nd. She called me last week. So about two weeks later, whatever it was, um, and she called to just say, what a wonderful job I did at that wedding. And our husband couldn't stop commenting on it. It was a random guest. I don't even know who this person is. Right. But she, she felt compelled enough to call me about how we involved everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it, another missed opportunity. This is on the performance side. I'm sorry. I'm jumping here. Is that okay? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. We got a few questions. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, another missed opportunity, and I find one of the biggest impacts you can have as a performer is your after blessing speech. That transition you have after the blessing and before dinner, because you have a captive audience at that moment. And if you can draw everybody back in that moment to why they are there, that's going to showcase your skills as an MC, yep. but put the spotlight back where it needs to be to keep everyone engaged and thinking about why they're there throughout that dinner and then into the dancing beyond, in my opinion. No, I, I think that's a, a great spot. And that's, that's one of the little hidden things that I don't talk about when I'm, when people are asking is I actually have about four, five mm -hmm. different methodologies that I've kind of scripted out. I'll, I'll call it a, a playbook in essence yeah. to move from one to the next. And depending upon the situation, I have my outline and, and my thoughts of what I want to do. And then it just gets adjusted. Yes, me too. Uh, and I don't mean to give away playbooks here, but <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of what this one of those Sorry. things. These, these are things we don't talk about too terribly much, but it, it, is, a, it is a part of what we, what you do and, and such. It so is. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Cindy had a question, uh, getting back to the bride comes up at a bridal show. And again, w because of this being such a great time of the year for this, we want to make sure we talk yeah, about this. She sure. comes up and the bride says, Hey, how much do you charge? Okay. Let's take it right from there. So the very, I, I'll be point blank honest. This is what I do. The very first time we pretty much, uh, don't answer that question. We try to ask about them. What are you, what are you looking for? We have four core services at tailored weddings. So we offer, you know, day of event coordination, we offer entertainment, we offer photo booths, and we offer lighting. So what would you like a price on? And then we start chatting a little more about that. Um, if they ask a second time, then absolutely need to give them a price. Uh, so I start with a starting price point. We start at 1500 for entertainment, and we move up from there depending on what you, what you wish. We have many different options and can customize a package to fit your needs. And that's... And I think that's, that's essentially it. I think that's a, a great idea. The the really kind of 
defining what they want because really they, they can't be upset about that because you know how much do you charge well you know what, what would you like a price on you know this yeah. this because they're just you know I've, and i have had that where i've had yeah they're, they're like i just need wedding ceremony, music for a ceremony they didn't need me for a dance they just needed that well gosh if i said oh i charge a thousand dollars a day well they'd have been like oh my gosh that's that's incredibly expensive for renting a speaker and a microphone or whatever yeah so i mean i think that's a great but but you get to the point where if they are insistent on a price, you're going to need to yeah do that you, because we would kind of have to at that point. Yeah, when we're looking for prices, I mean, we go to we go to look for vehicles on car soup, but we if you see call dealer, I mean, let's face it, we're not happy with that. We want to get an idea. It's it's part of you know yes. But uh, Adam I had a question here. Um, yes, it's uh, what's your follow plan after the bridal show? Mitch Wunsch mentioned. Mitch once mentioned. Wow, that's tougher to say than I thought. The Mitch once mentioned. Yeah, three or one three seven fourteen twenty one plan or something like that. Yes. Um. Can I give an exclusive here? Is that okay? I don't think anyone will tell. <laughs> We're going to be debuting a brand new product at Mobile Beat Las Vegas, and it is called the Ultimate Follow Up System. And I've designed a complete follow-up system. It pairs very nicely with DJ Event Planner. Shameless plug. You're welcome, Troy. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, yeah, we love Troy. <laughs> it pairs very nicely with DJ Event Planner. Plugs in very nicely. It's plug and play. Uh, but it essentially lays out exactly what you're going to do uh, at each day, essentially. So, yes, we have a process for what you set up to happen automatically, which is an automatic email campaign that's triggered in DJ Event Planner based upon statuses. Uh, we have what you may need to do or customize yourself. And that would be your phone calls, if you will. And then what you should plan to do next. So what are the possible outcomes of that status? Uh, and yes, for an active lead or bridal show lead, we do a 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, 14, 21, and 28. Uh, that is our, our follow-up schedule. So at that point, they've got eight touches via email. And of course, at any point, any one of the touches or the phone calls in between, um, they could turn around and move into a, well, they want us to send them info or send a proposal. So they'll go to sent info status, uh, or then they, they want to schedule a meeting. So they'll go into, into sales meeting status. There's a full email campaign for each one of those statuses uh, that we've already uh, created, been using, works wonderful um, for every single step through the process you can have an automated email campaign and know exactly what to do next at each step in the process. Uh, it's in a, both a Word and Excel uh, document. So if you work better on one versus the other, uh, it can help you out for that. Um, we haven't even put it on the site yet. Just <laughs> hmm. <laughs> a very true story. I've been slowly releasing it to a few individuals who I've been coaching as of late uh, with different things. Um, retail on it is probably going to be in the price point of $299 to $249. Um, if anyone wishes to have it, all I want you to do, just reach out, message me. I don't have any fancy, you know, signs like Ron had, uh, just <laughs> reach out, message me. Uh, and I, I give anyone here on this call, uh, the product for $199. That'll be a show special on it too. Mike, uh, uh Michael Dunn, uh, or Durham here. Sorry. Yeah, I need Durham. my glasses. Yes. Durham. Um, will it be a constant contact or MailChimp? Yes, it can work with anything because it's going to be a plug and play. It's essentially uh, the Excel spreadsheet will be a, you drop down and choose what your status is. It lays out exactly what you do for each of those three uh, in regards to what you set up to happen automatically, your email campaign through constant contact, MailChimp, uh, Ace of Sales or Outstand, which I still use myself as a Gitmer certified advisor. Um, what you want to customize and do yourself, which will be your, you or your salesperson's follow-up uh, on the phone, and then what you need to plan to do next. What are the possible outcomes of that status with the client? So, for example, a sent info um, status at that point, you know, um, they could respond to the email campaign and they go into a sales meeting, right? Then you're going to drop them into sales meeting status, and then that email campaign will start with the confirmation of the appointment and the meeting reminder and all that that's automatically sent out there. Or maybe they, after send info and the phone calls and the emails that you have going out, they don't respond. You're gonna update them to release status. And then at release status, 
Uh, you're going to send them that email campaign, which will go out and trigger a uh, we're sad to see you go. And then a link to a survey uh, to get information about why they chose to go another direction. And then you're giving them a hook for that too, uh, with four ways to wow your wedding guests or whatever you choose to use for a, a hook to get them to fill it out. You're going to send them a, a nice report, if you will, afterwards to get them to, to fill out the survey for you. I think John is, uh, I'm going to reply to him, that John, I think from what Mitch is describing, that if you've got that system and you're already sending out your and having those reaches, this is really ah. just going to give you the information of what each reach should be as a suggestion mm -hmm. for that. Not that this is set in stone, but it's really going to be kind of an outline that you can implement in any system, Infusionsoft, yes. if, you're, if you're doing yes. eye contact or whatever. So, John, if you've already got the system, this is really, I, 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 Mitch, if I'm, stop me if I'm wrong, but you're really giving them the content to put into these touches. Yes. Yes. Every single email content is there for you. Some also uh, with pictures as well. Um, now, I want to caveat this. Everyone's process is going to be different. You don't have to do that many touches. Um, I, I, but I would encourage you, I think a lot of salespeople give up too quickly on a prospect. You got to understand that you're not the only thing they have going. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a lot else going on in their lives uh, from, you know, get, going dress shopping or choosing colors or bridesmaid issues or, you know, mother groom issues or, you know, school and work and, you know, fiance. I mean, there's a ton of things going on in their life. So just don't sit there and think, well, they never got back to me and it's only been five hours. <laughs> you know, you, you can't think like that. Um, and yes, there are phone calls we recommend in the interim there. Uh, we typically do a 4, a 9, a 12, a 17, 25, and 35 on the phone call pattern. But that's, like I said, your, your choice to choose to how many touches you want to have. Um, and again, it, you can't be pestering them without giving them new information. It can't just be, hey, did you get a DJ yet? No. Gerald, this is, this, this, Gerald this is we're getting to you now. This statement. Go ahead. Keep going. This, yeah, this, it's, you're not saying in these emails, hey, did you just get a DJ yet? No. I mean, a couple of them, you're finding out, okay, where are we at in the process kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with that either. Your email should be short and concise. And again, if you get the content, if you get the email content on this uh, ultimate follow-up system, I would definitely recommend to tweak it to how you would speak uh, to a client. It may not be the way as I, I speak to a client, um, but I would encourage you to keep it short, keep it conversational, uh, and then you know, obviously tweak it to your needs. And I think I think that that making it tweaking and making it adjustable. What do you, what is your thought? And Gerard, I'm sorry, it was Gerard. And again, I've had to blow this screen up because it's going so fast. You guys are, are putting things up. <laughs> you mentioned that it has to be new information. Now, what is your thought about having some some content in there? So maybe a tip or an idea yes. or a suggestion. Talk about that for a little bit. Absolutely. So, and depending on the campaign, of course. You know, the, the campaign for us for booked client, for example, is absolutely all about tips. Our book clients, um, I would encourage you that our process for a booked client is there's an automatic email that goes out every month. So, and essentially it's a timeline of what they should be doing for that month. So, for example, for a booked client, um, they're going to get, you know, 12 months prior to their wedding day this is what you should be working on, you know, uh, 11 months prior to your wedding day, this is what you should be working on. And it walks through literally all of those things um, that they should be working on 12 months prior to their wedding day, 11 yeah. months prior to their wedding day. And, you know, they're different. Um, the, the email subject lines matter too, because that's going to draw them into want to read more, especially if they haven't booked you yet. Um, yeah, you want to sure. have, creative email subject lines. That's, that's a key. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan of being top of mind. I'm a big fan of giving content to them as much as possible. If you can throw out a tip or two, even before you book them, I think that's a good thing. 
Yeah, I definitely think so too. Because I think getting back to that, will they throw your if you, if you have a tip that's of, of value to them, especially if it's a tip, and and okay, so here's a here's a tip that you guys can probably take. If it's a tip that they can use down the road, but they can't use it today, but it's something that's valuable enough that they want to hang on to it, they're going to save your email off to the side than to just read it once and throw it away. Amen. So it has to be a timely tip, and it almost wants to be a tip that's going to be closer to the wedding. Just guys, file that away. We send out. I'll throw this out there too. We. One of our tips that we send out, and this is an automated email that goes out 14 days prior to the event, is also sent to the maid of honor and best man, and it's tips for their toast. Because when do most maid of honor and best men start thinking about their toast? Uh, about 14 days prior. <laughs> well, the, groom, the, the best man the night before. Yeah. <laughs> so we send out that email, just you know, top 10 toasting tips is sent out about 14 days prior to the wedding automated email campaign. Uh, look, we're going to have to wrap things up in a little bit. Uh, Michael, um, what if you don't like the follow-up system? What do you? Will I give a money back guarantee? Of course I will. That's fine. Oh, oh, oh. If, if they don't like your, your system. So in other words, they're asking if, if, if it's a money back guarantee, I got you. Is that what he's asking? I think so. I don't know, but we, we just, now we just put that in the, in the fine print. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh, you know that that's a it's yeah for michael that's not a problem i you know i'm not into giving away free stuff as much as i can but uh i do want to give away as much free as i can too like today right yeah exactly you know? and, and uh, there's been some great information here for those of you out there watching hopefully you guys have picked up a few a few nuggets our time's almost gone we need to talk oh, a wow. little bit more about about what you're doing in las vegas Yes, so we have a sales is solutions workshop at the Las Vegas DJ show. And I'm gonna tell you right up front, nothing happens. You can't do anything in your business until a sale is made. Selling is the root of this. And if you are looking for a way to be able to improve your skill set, if you're looking for an opportunity to be able to learn a new way to present your services. That's part of what we're going to give you at the workshop. And the best thing about it is you're going to come up with it on your own. Yep. And you'll get coaching on it. This isn't just me giving you, you know, the ultimate follow-up system, that's plug and play. I'm giving you stuff to use. But the workshop is where we actually workshop through each step of that sales cycle. So we're going to workshop through how to better research your clients, how you're doing that currently, if you're doing that currently. We're going to cover exactly what you've been taught and how to approach a sales meeting is probably opposite of what you should be doing and walk you through that as well uh, with how to, to give a proper welcome, uh, how to discuss your and their story for maximum effectiveness. We're going to workshop through each step, uh, their experience, their expectation, their goals. How do you get them talking? Uh, Vicky, my podcast partner, uh, has the personalities for business book and, you know, different personalities that we work through. And sometimes those blue greens are hard to get talking and we'll, and we'll talk about ways to do that. Um, so each step of the sales process, we're going to workshop through together and there's different exercises and you're going to have two different clients to be able to workshop through together, both, uh, on your own in pairs with partners and we'll get coaching on how you're presenting your services how you uh, will role play some of those uh, sales scenarios and then get coaching on how to make better presentations because you shouldn't be practicing this on your clients. You should have a forum, be able to practice it, get coaching so that it doesn't cost you money and that this investment will actually make you money over and over and over again. Exactly. I, I know I have uh, at least one uh, past graduate in the chat tonight with uh, Brian Kelm and I'm sure Brian could speak to how it's impacted him too. So, and that, no, Brian, I wasn't. A, uh, we weren't asking you to jump in and and, and say a no. ton, but we would like you though to just <laughs> you give us a, 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 a sixty or seventy word <laughs> essay. <laughs> uh, Mitch, if people Brian. want to find information, where can they go to check it out? They can go to MitchTaylor.net forward slash workshops is where they go to get more information about the workshops that I'm giving coming up. And the only workshop we have scheduled so far this year is at Mobile Beat Las Vegas. And frankly, it probably will be the only workshop I do this year. We have a few other speaking engagements this year, 
but probably the only workshop is going to be a mobile beat. So you want to join me for that. It's going to be coming up on Sunday, March 13th. It's all day, 9 a.m. to pretty much 6 p.m. We'll have an hour break for lunch. And I promise you, if you do not get your money's worth out of that workshop, I will personally refund you your money back. That does come with a money back guarantee. March 13th, right? Yep, March okay, 13th. I'm just adding the link. It was mitchtaylor.net slash workshops. Workshop. Yeah, workshops. That's the uh, that's Plural. the link to that. Perfect. I just put that in the description below, gang, so you guys can go. You may have to, if you're watching it live right now, you, when you click refresh, that's where the link will be. I have put it down, and this will be sp separated out tomorrow. We're going to have two videos. We'll have the Ron Ruth video and the Mitch yeah, individually, so that way it's just a little easier for watching. And as I mentioned in the chat, this will all be up on iTunes, and it will be a podcast for folks to listen to a little later. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, one last question, then we're going to have to fly. Chris, what do you have here for us? Is going from a small coverage area to stepping up to a bigger market, any suggestions to start with? Oh, boy, there's a show for us right there. Uh, that's a whole show. But uh, the first thing I would tell you, Chris, is to get out and network. Network, network, network. Uh, go chat with local wedding planners in that market. Uh, talk to the venues. You know, go darken some doors. Make yourself available. Do some research on who are the major players in that market. Uh, and take people out to lunch. Networking is probably going to be the biggest way to get your foot in the door to a bigger market uh, as fast as you can. For sure. Well said. And, of course, we could go into more detail, and there's a lot of little aspects of it. But as we, that's follow up system is digital download, by the way. That's a, that's a, that's, what's that? The follow-up system is digital download. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yep, there we go. Okay. Mitch, we need to jump. It is 9.30. Awesome. It's time for us to go. It's 10.30 your time, but time yep. for us to wrap things up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. If you've got any questions for Mitch, you can send an email to him at mitchtaylor at discjockeynews.com. You can get a hold of him there. Go to his website, mitchtaylor.net. You'll find contact ways there, any way, shape, or form. Mitch is the guy to help you. And if you've got some questions, he's there for you. Mitch, thank you, John. Thank you very much. And we will uh, see you in... Uh, in, in at mobile beat here in a few weeks yes we'll see you at mobile beat thank you so much all right everyone thank you for watching this is john young with the disc jockey news and disc jockey news tv good night mm -hmm.